Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Rent to Rent Success podcast. And I'm gr- got so glad to be bringing it back with this special episode with Van Bogstad because nobody goes into property for the love of admin, and Van is our hero. Van is the founder of Coho Property Management Software, recently acquired Go Tenant, creator of the HMO Awards, and very excitingly, he's launching a competitor to Spare Room this summer. So, Van, welcome to the show. Hi, yeah, it's really good to be on here. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal to have you on. I've actually wanted to do this for some time. Let me just say a, a few words about how we met each other, which is so unusual for a software company, um, because you started up a few years ago and got in touch with a lot of us and connected from there. And then you started up the HMO Awards, which has been such a phenomenal event and really changed the face of property events in the UK. And not only that, we've also had the Man of Mind event where is it 40 property uh, entrepreneurs, HMO focused, all get together in a manner and have a lot of fun. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's that's just it. You've got to have some fun on the way. Yeah, and so what I think is really important about what you're doing is not only the technology of it, but the community of it. And you've built a really strong uh, community there, Van. Yeah, I mean, it was always quite intentional. Um, the whole view of this was that HMOs have a bad reputation, generally. Mm-hmm. I think it's completely unfounded. I mean, it's not unfounded, and it's definitely not completely unfounded, but... <laughs> I think that HMOs are actually um, the biggest uh, chance of us solving the housing crisis and easing up on the cost of living. And also if we look at kind of uh, young people and mental health, helping on that side with loneliness as well. So whilst the reputation isn't completely unfounded, I think that it's not recognized enough for what it can do to the world. And uh, and part of trying to make that um, recognized by more people is creating more of a community within HMOs. So the people who are the most forward thinking, doing really interesting things, they can all come together and share those ideas. And also me as someone who knows kind of comparatively nothing compared to people like you and Nikki and and all the other people, um, especially those who go to the Manor Minds, uh, I can just sort of sit there in the same room and learn, which normally I probably wouldn't be invited to if I hadn't hired the mansion myself. <laughs> Yeah, well, that is key, what you've just said there, Van. You want to sit in a room with other HMO property investors and learn. And what you've done over these years is you've learned so much and you've brought that into Coho. And Nikki and I uh, and HMO Heaven is transferring as we speak over to Coho. And I did not think we would ever do this because we have been with Arthur for many years. Um, But I think it's fair to say, and without being unfair to anybody, Arthur has not moved with the times, uh, listened to customers. And I think that they will admit they're not there for, you know, smaller investors. That's not where they want to put their focus. And so to be able to come over to Coho and find it so user friendly that you actually know all the things and you've got everything there. Because one of the things that's very terrifying or terrifying for a beginner um, HMO self manager or, or letting agent beginner is systemizing and having that systemized process. So I'd love us if you could talk to us about how Coho can help with you know, creating that systemization. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, when you read these business books, you kind of um, often hear that kind of term, like what's your business's superpower? And I think for us, it's always been that uh, we're really, really good at building products. Um, we are kind of, me as one of the founders, I'm a developer, my co-founder is a developer, another one of my co-founders is a developer. Um, our head of product ran a huge uh co-living company, also a developer. So it's kind of like in the team, we just have the ability to try to understand what the problems are and then build it. And like when you run a tech company, like in Arthur's defense, 
product development is so expensive and so difficult and so time consuming unless pretty much everyone in the company who has like a high level um a high role in the company has the ability to build it <laughs> in which case it's it's actually really fun because we get to speak to people like you and and off the back of a conversation we come up with some amazing features so um yeah like our approach to it has always been I mean, a lot of people know this. I'm not from the property industry. I was a tenant in an HMO who had a really, really good experience. And what I wanted to recreate was basically off the back of conversations I had with my landlord, the processes he put in place, the process that I was kind of subjected to in quite a good way. Uh, I wanted to kind of create those to be available for everybody. So our approach to product development has been quite different to a lot of companies where we've kind of started with a completely blank slate with the view of like what's the end experience and then spoke to people like you and and all the other like really like great like thought leaders in the space to try to understand what you need and uh you mentioned at the start how we met and uh how i met a lot of other people i actually sent p probably about 30, 40 messages out to select people way before we even had a product. So it wasn't a case of selling. It's just like, here's an idea, here's some things. So off the back of that, um, we've just been problem solving and problem solving and problem solving. It's kind of like people would say something like, um, like the onboarding of a new tenancy is, is clunky or uh, we'd look at someone's process and it's like emails back and forth. And it's kind of like, uh, Right. Can you go over and fill in this Google Google form about some information? Then this referencing company is going to get in touch with you, and then you have to go over to DocuSign and sign something, and then I'm going to email you all of this, and all of this is happening across between emails, phone, and WhatsApp. So we looked at that from like a user perspective and wanted to see can we make it like super smooth for for the user, for the um, for the for say for the tenant, for the uh, manager, for the manager's team. So, um, I mean, that's just one of the things that we did and I guess we just didn't stop. Yeah. And that's the reason where, why I, you know, I, I recognized straight away the user friendliness, the much more user friendly than the system that we were using. However, I didn't want to move because of the upheaval and all of the time investing in, in moving my system. Well, I did want to move and I didn't want to move. Um, however, it's just been so, so good. You made it impossible for Ab not to move. And so um, Ricky, who is closer to that side of things than I am, has been really impressed with the system, the software, and the fact that it takes away some of our processes. So some of our initial onboarding processes we did before the person hit Arthur. Now the entire process, even from advertising the room, will be all taking place within Coho. And that's just a boon for anyone here setting up a rent to rent business who because because you don't need to have your processes now in place, you just need to have Coho. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting one. Like it's one of the biggest challenges we have is trying to get people to move to the software just because for the most part, moving from one thing to another is usually kind of only slightly different, maybe some slight improvements. And uh, and then it's there's almost kind of better the devil, you know, at times. And I'd also say, although we've like got decent brand presence, we aren't very good at saying what Coho can do to people. So for most people, they kind of look at it and see it as a sort of like for like, it maybe looks slightly nicer. Um, and a lot of our users kind of end up taking a bit of a leap of faith, but we lose so few that move over. I think it's just because like when they get on there, they realize it's, in fact, one thing that stood out to me in a conversation I had with um, a meta exec is he said the challenge we'll have with marketing is that we haven't built a slight iteration upon what people know. We've built kind of a whole evolution of what should happen. So it's kind of getting people to understand like, this is a whole new, really cool set of processes that you can introduce to systemize in one smooth go instead of like, okay, here's what you did on this software and here's the equivalent here and here's what you did and here's the equivalent. So yeah, we've, um, that's, that's always going to be a challenge we'll have with marketing. But, but like last month we, 
we did three times more new business than we did in our greatest ever month, which was the month before. So I think people are starting to sort of realise now. People are starting to realise, and people like me, you took a long time to <laughs> to get there. But it, it's head and shoulders above. And what people don't realise, perhaps, is it, it's exactly as I say, instead of you having to codify and systemize and write down all your processes, you just get Coco. Coco is the process. You can now have, you know, a VA in the Philippines help you with your um, HMO administration and really make it that sort of seamless, more hands-free business in terms of the online administration with Coho. Yeah, and um, and the the secret bit behind everything we're doing, which you kind of alluded to at the start, is uh, where my my passion really is is uh, is making HMOs like the the sort of default choice for people in their let's say early twenties, mid twenties, or divorcees, mm. and uh, and not a lot of people know this, but actually the reason we've built the software is because we want to create competition in the marketplace mm -hmm. for listings. Like at the moment, you have one place where you can go to find a professional let or mm -hmm. where you can go to find tenants. And we just always saw it as um, that's just not good for anybody apart from the, the market leader in the space. But even then, I mean, innovation, like you need competition for innovation. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my view to things was when I was a tenant, I had like the best experience it was such a great time and actually i found the place on gumtree weirdly if that even exists now um but i found the place on gumtree and it was sort of listed as a from the tenant's perspective and talked all about who lives in the property so yes. for me it was about selling that that lifestyle side of it and my reason for moving was basically um, i was living at my mom and dad's i was fine for money i could have moved out on my own i looked at a couple of places that could be options but I just didn't really want to live on my own. I wanted to sort of live with people that I could get on with and have fun with. And the listing that I saw was was literally that. It was like, it was, here's everyone in the house and here's kind of their ages and what they're into. And that made me really excited to move. Mm. And that is something that I think is, is really missing. And I think um, a lot of people running HMOs, they might, they might or they might not care about that. And the not caring about it, I think, is a result of kind of basically no one's choosing to live in HMOs. They're usually kind of living in them because they can't afford something else. Mm -hmm. But that's missing out on so many people who would choose to live in HMOs. Like I asked my nephew, who's 22, it's like, would you rather live with a group of your friends or would you rather live on your own? And he's like, I definitely choose to live with a group of my friends. And it's like, okay, how about if they're not your friends yet, but you're going to get on with them? He's like, oh, 100%. Mm. But, then, but how about if you may or may not, you don't know until you get in there whether you're going to like them or not. And it's mm. like, uh, no, probably not. <laughs> so what we've always wanted to create was, was that same <clears throat> experience that I had, where before someone moves in, they can hopefully be sold on their lifestyle. And to cut a really long story short, the way we find out enough about the property and the tenants is by building a really good property management system to make it really easy to manage your properties and ask the tenants if they want to offer up some information about themselves. And as a result, we can then create what will be a really modern marketplace to find tenants that yeah. shows actually who's in the property, which I think is really exciting. It is. And it works so well because having seen your system and people, the housemates do actually use it and put their photos and what their interests are onto the system. So when you go and look at a certain room in a house, you can see who's in the other rooms uh, in a really nice way. Um, sort of like maybe not, not you wouldn't say a Facebook, but they've certainly got some of their details and their personality uh, has come through and you can really choose between, you know, who you think you're a good fit with and who not. And yeah. Yeah, and I, I think by doing this, I think we're going to start to open up the market a lot more away from just people who can't afford to live on their own but to people who actually can afford it, they'll be really good tenants. They just uh, they just want to live with people they're going to get on with. So yeah. I'm quite excited for like 
what what this has the potential to do to the industry but i mean it's always scary going up against a huge um a huge marketplace dominant leader yeah well i think uh, those of us who've been in the marketplace using spare room for many years have found that really the prices have gone up significantly over that period and as you say, yeah, they are the only ones in the market. So I'm definitely uh, here and I'm sure many listeners are here to support you as you do this, because I think it is important that we do see uh, competition, you know, in this marketplace, because I, I think that makes it better for, for all of us, for us as, you know, buyers of the service and also for the housemates who are looking for properties as well. Yeah, yeah, I think um, that's something that we're gonna hopefully start to launch this summer so yeah, yeah very challenging. but I mean the the one downside will be for everybody else it's kind of initially sort of only available to people on Coho um, yeah. just because otherwise how to you get your property on there you know that it will be opened up to other people but um, yeah if you want to be part of the revolution please come along yeah and the other thing that people get when they join up to Coho is that they become part of your community and that involves a lot of different things. I've talked about the Man and Mind event, but I know that you also have your own show as well, Van, where you, uh, well, Helen uh, interviews people and uh, talks to them about their HMO businesses. And there are lots of other, you know, there's lots of online community as well as some in-person community. So tell us a little bit more about the community aspect of things that people get. Yeah, I mean, as, as we talked about earlier, there's so much knowledge in the HMO space, but um, it's kind of in pockets. Like mm -hmm. in, the, in the traditional agents, there's like three on every high street or more, probably a lot more. Um, and they're all competing with each other. And I don't want to sort of like put anything down, but running singlets is a, a lot easier than running HMOs, mm -hmm. like significantly easier. And it's been done for ages. Like it's it's been done since houses began, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Whereas HMOs, it's a lot more nascent. Um, people are still learning. And there's usually only a handful of decent property managers and investors in each city. And they're all having to basically learn on their own or from a few thought leaders like yourself. Mm. And, and we kind of, uh, we sort of as a business, if we're gonna look at it from a selfish, selfish perspective, we identify that as a risk in a sense because lots of people doing their own thing there's no consistency like what what do we build if everyone's doing something different so we really wanted to sort of create a community where like the mana mind for example at that mana mind in the round table debates there was people managing um i think it was nine thousand six hundred rooms between them mm. and like all sharing the problems all sharing what's working well and like they're all learnings that could take someone individually a year or two to get those learnings. But like off the back of that, we've got a really good um, WhatsApp group where, you know, people who are really like at the top of the game, they're coming in with questions and they've got other people giving answers. And those sorts of community things, like our Discord has 500 people in it. Like those sorts of community things are things that we just want to keep pushing because we think one of the ways that we're going to sort of make make HMOs explode is by is by all the people that are running them and managing them, like being able to be at the top of their game, learn from each other. And I think that's a really nice thing in the in the industry in general. It's a lot more collaborative than maybe some others because I think there's a view that like, especially in this sort of space, a rising tide raises all ships. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and the other exciting thing that we have coming up uh, very soon is the HMO Awards fan and that was a game changer last year and many of uh, the listeners here came along but I'd love you to give us some teasers about what's going to be happening this year. Yeah so uh, so the first event went really well considering we're not an events company. <laughs> I think that's kind of why it goes well we don't need to um this isn't kind of our annual how we make our money sort of thing. This is purely a let's have some fun, let's learn, let's meet all the people, bring everyone to one place. So for those who hadn't seen last year's, it was like a really cool venue. It was where Richard Branson went to boarding school. 
So like an amazing venue and we had really good speakers. And this year we're, we're up in it. We're having even more great speakers and um, an exclusive announcement right now for the podcast. Um, Stephanie has agreed to give a talk at the awards. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm sure that's going to be a completely packed room. Yeah, and um, what I love about your your talks, Van, um, because let's face it, listening to long list of speakers, it can get but dull. But you've got the TEDx style of speakers, where it's within a twenty minute period with a few key takeaways. And last year, I learned so much. But it also was really an exciting pace where people were dashing back and forth. Which which speakers am I going for? And it was so engaging and not at all like some of the dull events that we've all been to before. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite easy to get death by PowerPoint at times with a sort of 40 minute to an hour long presentation. And usually in those presentations, there's some really, really interesting things. Mm -hmm. But like there's usually only sort of three or four really, really interesting things. So my brief to all the speakers has been take those three or four things and fit it into like, 12 minutes if you can do that brilliant if you can fit it into four minutes brilliant like if someone can learn all they need to learn in 10 seconds absolutely amazing <laughs> but um but i think that kind of 15 minute 20 minute sort of presentation is it's a nice it's a nice amount of time to be able to say who you are and deliver like hard hitting knowledge to people who can go away and and improve the business but one of the things i really liked last year was uh um, after the event, about a month or two after, somebody approached me and said that um, they, they'd they heard this kind of co-living sort of side of things, which uh, a little side avenue. Um, I'm a fan of co-living, but I think it's misunderstood. Like, I don't think it's having to do £200,000 refurbs. I think it's just kind of having an intentional view that there are people living together and like, you know, the service you offer will keep people there, keep them happier, keep them paying on time. Anyway, um, and that's really like what the talks were sort of delivering at the awards. And uh, yeah, he said that uh, off the back of that, he realized like just how big an opportunity there is by instead of kind of having a bit of a race to the bottom, lowering rents, lowering the amount you're spending on um, modernizing the property. Instead, if you, start to improve on service actually the rents can get higher and the you know the pr profitability of these properties can go higher and this person approached a number of their landlords and got buy-in from a few of them to really like reverse their trend as well no that is that, that is the um what i love about the community uh, the insights, the little insights that make a huge difference, but also it's great fun. Um, people really did let their hair down last year, and it was it was great fun. There was um, a food truck that was a, a novel kind of approach to things with really yeah. tasty food. I think, uh, we we as as a company just generally. I say like to do things differently. I think it's more that we we generally don't start from the position of what do people do? How do we improve on it? It's more like uh, I, I'm personally not a massive fan of award events because I feel like I look like a bell end in a tuxedo and uh, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable the whole time. And the food can be really nice uh, or it can be fine. Whereas um, what I like is that festival vibe. So we put, yes. we, uh, we got live music, food trucks and the live music, like stuff like that's cool because often with these things, you go to a website and you search corporate band things. But our approach instead was to go to Instagram and look for people who were just like good musicians who were actually quite eager to play somewhere. So mm. that, that was really, that was a nice difference for me. So let's give all the info because we've said it's a Richard Branson school, which is Stowe House, which people may not know. So give people the rundown about the info and the date and um, anything else that they'll need to know to yeah. be able to go and grab their tickets. So the events on the um, on the 31st of May, um, it's an all day event. So I think it starts at like 12 o'clock with the talks. Um, don't get put off by the awards section of it. It takes like 40 minutes to an hour of the event. But to be honest, it's quite a nice, it's a really nice theater that it's done in. 
Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's a full day event. There should be 14 talks across two different stages. Really good networking. Like last year, last event, it was like all the leading people in HMOs were there in the in the room. Um, it's in Stowe in Buckinghamshire. So it's kind of like central to everybody, essentially, is what we're trying to go for. And uh, yeah, the tickets are available now. And I think uh, in terms of ticket pricing, like it's 14 talks, awards, networking, live music, street food, which is all included, um, a bar, and the tickets are, I think, 250. So hopefully that's considered reasonable value. It's exceptional value. And we stayed at a local hotel and your boss picked us up last year. Um, I'm guessing something similar will be happening yeah, this yeah. year. Can we put buses on to make sure everyone can get there easily enough as well. Yeah, no, so I'm really looking forward to that, Van, and I just want to thank you and your team for your dedication in really, really going for it with this HMO software management. You've not just gone in as a normal HMO software company, um, distant, you know, minding your own business. You've really gone out into the HMO community and found out what we need, and you are delivering it. I've you know, HMO landlords are not known for getting excited about things, are they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't like to say this because I, when I get imposter syndrome, but I'm genuinely, genuinely trying to build a sort of like a billion pound company in the UK, which there haven't been many so far. But uh, I think, uh, I think this really is scope for, for, the same thing to happen to shared living that happened to serviced accommodation. Like Airbnb mm. came along and changed boring holiday lets that you find in a newspaper that like some people do, but most people just stay in hotels. They changed that to make it so we're actually like staying in, in a serviced accommodation, staying in a spare room or something like that. Like that, that became the normal way for people to do things. And it just took that catalyst. There's loads of passionate people in the industry building the products, but it just took a catalyst to make it possible and to make it kind of accessible to, to all of the people. That's what we're trying to do essentially. So like, we're not going to do that by just building some software and sitting and hoping Like we really have to go all out. We have to try and address the reputational issues, try and bring everyone together, literally do anything we can to support the growth of the industry. Great. So thank you so much for coming on and joining us. And I know if you're listening and watching and you're interested in HMOs, if you're already managing HMOs, if you own HMOs, if you're starting a rent to rent, this is definitely the event for you. Uh, so go go along to hmoawards.com. Of course, Nikki and I and members of our community will be there as well as the who's who of the HMO world and as well if you if you come to the event that's one thing but also do check out Coho see what all the fuss is about see what's been getting um, landlords and investors excited about this software not something we're usually excited about but what I'm very excited about is the 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 idea that now you no longer need to codify your systems yourself. Everything is done for you in Coho. You buy that software and you've got your processes because it takes you through the onboarding process and everything you need to do to onboard your tenant and so on. So it really is a game changer. You've come on leaps and bounds even since you were already ahead at the beginning. And in the short time, you've come on leaps and bounds and taken on a, a huge amount of investment as well van yeah we 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 have um though i'm not someone who loves taking on loads of investments so uh my view is if we can do it without that's even better but i mean the really nice thing for us has been um a majority of that investment has come from our users which has yeah. been a really nice kind of uh I don't know, it's kind of a bit of affirmation on what we're doing because i don't like to go out and ask people either so the fact people have actually asked us has been really nice but i guess that's just like you know at the moment what coho can do is replace communications on whatsapp give oh, you a yeah. place for all of your maintenance to be done the onboarding like the compliance is a really big issue just because <clears throat> especially in hmos like the government are just fining 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 because there's so many people who are doing it badly almost intentionally and the good people are just getting caught up in that so that you know the compliance is really good 
some of the nice little features like just tracking tenant opinion because a tenant won't tell you the house is completely messy until they're close to wanting to leave but like we sort of prod them to find out those things on a monthly basis and then deliver that to you as information that you can act on as a kind of stitch in time it's just loads of those little things that we've built to try to basically just to try to make it as profitable and time saving for you as possible and it it humanizes it as well because if you've not you know you might want to do a questionnaire or a survey and it might be one of those things that gets pushed off um, but if it's happening automatically within your software then for me as the housemate nurse seeing oh they're asking how am i getting on what's the property like have i got anything that wants to be improved and that's happening without me as the um property manager needing mm -hmm. to do anything that's that's just so valuable and that's one of many things that you know really impressed uh nikki and you you've just got the the zero integration coming on as well yeah the zero integrations now in beta and um yeah the feedback from from our beta testers has been really really good so far i think we'll be possibly we'll have to see uh mm -hmm. one of possibly the only person with a zero integration by by the end of the summer but we'll see yes oh yes because you 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 acquired go tenant who we used to talk about as well yeah yeah so um yeah we acquired go tenant um and actually they yeah so there's three companies that have a zero integration um, i won't mention the third but uh yeah. go tenant um yeah everyone's moving over to coho on there not everyone obviously but a vast vast majority so far has absolutely overwhelmed us with how fast they've moved yeah. Um, and yeah yeah so uh i think that'll be really useful to people when we launch it yeah it will it will but thank you for taking the time to come on van it's been a pleasure to speak to you today and you know what you've created is just phenomenal we're excited in hmo heaven to be transferring over to coho and be part of the coho family we've sort of been distant family for a while now you know we've, we've enjoyed attending your awards being part of the community attending the manor mind getting to know the other the other investors within that it's just been great getting to know you personally and i've really appreciated you know your support with a uh, recent name you know i've been ill and you give me lots of tips and um and help and support there and i think i think that is what your community is about Van. it's not just providing an exceptional service and creating this massive company it's also about being there for people and uh, i think We've really valued that in, in the time that, that we've known you. I oh, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think, you know, with this, there's ways that we can all make money and we only live once. So I think you have to kind of do it in a way that you enjoy, that that is personable, that kind of, that you can make genuine connections. I think that's what life's about. It's making the real connections with people, whether they're using the software or not. You know, I might send someone a joking, nasty text message if they're not using Coho. But deep down, I still like them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, well, Van, we, we're drawing to the close. We're drawing to a close now. Is there anything else that you wanted to share today that I haven't uh, asked you about or that you want to end on? Uh, no, but if anyone wants to, um, if anyone wants to connect with me, by all means, I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn. Oh, one thing we might start doing soon, which I'm excited about, is we, we're probably sitting on like the, the most thorough and interesting data in the HMO space that mm. people have kept asking us like asking us things about it like I was asked the other day what's the average um what's the average return of a rent to rent deal in a certain area and it's actually like those are the sort of bits of information that we can anonymize you know our tens of thousands of rooms and and work out so we might start to look at some of those things over the coming months um you know how tenant trends are changing so uh <laughs> yeah oh very very exciting um i can't wait to see some of that data coming out and if you've been listening and you think what is this coho need to have a look at this software then you can go to rent rent success.com slash coho c-o-h-o and check it out there or if you can join us on the 31st of march sorry 31st of may even 2024 
at, in person at the HMO Awards. Go to hmoawards.com. It, it'll be amazing as it always is. Okay. Thanks. Oh, thank thank you. Very fun to say hi because I'm very shy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, thank you so much for watching and for listening. Thank you, Van, for joining us and sharing all the goodness about Coho. And I will see you all again next week. <laughs>